Hello. Thank you for tuning in to this debate on the issue of whether the unsaved are eternally consigned to uh, banished away from God's presence and to eternal suffering, or whether or not they will be um, their life will just be extinguished and annihilated and they will be no more. Um, thank you for Melanie also for participating in this debate. Um, I think we both had an interesting time of preparation for it. We both learned some things that we had no idea of before. Um, and again, thank you for tuning in. Um, summing up, I do not believe that Melanie had established from her uh, discussion of the scriptures that talked about the death of the soul or the eternal life being a gift. I don't think how, that she had demonstrated a, a definite link between those and conditional immortality. That is where immortality, ongoing life, is only a gift given by God. Um, the, there are two choices, eternal life with God, eternal life apart from God. The scriptures demonstrate that. One of the scriptures that Melanie cited in favor of her case, as I pointed out, shows that the soul is tough to destroy. It's kind of an ongoing entity. So it keeps on going, and it's so tough that only God can destroy it. Um, he can also cause it to destroy in the sense of suffer, break down over a long, long period of time or forever. That is God. God can do that. He has that power over body and soul. I also want to point out that in my summation that annihilationism is in a scriptural sense incoherent and possibly even in a philosophical sense. Let me explain why. We discussed a portion of scripture in 1 Peter that talked about the destruction of those who were uh, experienced the flood in Noah's day. Worldwide flood, as far as we know, and many people perished. However, did they perish forever? No, their body may have perished. Their souls definitely did not. We went over this in our Q&A portion of our discussion. We got the question about the different types of life, different levels of death. Well, those souls who are judged, their body has experienced the first judgment, their souls are going to experience the second judgment. So in a sense, they're not dead. So in a sense, those people did not perish in the flood. Yes, they did perish, but part of them is still ongoing. They're awaiting a second judgment, Revelation 20. We discuss that further. Revelation 20, as I pointed out, has the Greek expression, um, thronon, megon, lukon, the great white throne judgment. That's when the unsaved dead are going to be resurrected. They're going to be raised back up to life and judged, given their sentence for their lack of belief and their unrighteousness. Moving on to the case for hell, eternal hell. Um, I had referred to several different passages. I want to highlight one more, Mark chapter 9. In Mark 9, we have a trilogy of expressions about how hell is ongoing. This, e this, eternal des this is an eternal destiny for the unsaved, and it keeps on going and going. One of the expressions is, if, you, if your um, hand causes you to stumble, cut it off. It's better you, for you to enter heaven with one hand than to go into the unquenchable fires of hell with both hands, with two hands. So, and then we also have the same expression about your foot, if your foot causes you to stumble. Your eye, if your eye, gouge out an eye, go into the kingdom of God crippled rather than, or lame rather than going in um, to this eternal state. It's ongoing. Um, the Greek word is asbeston. It's like our, we, get, we derive the term asbestos in English from it. Um, that's the idea of it's ongoing. It continues and continues. Um, there's no way to get around this. As a matter of fact, before that trilogy of expressions, we have the expression, if you cause one of the little ones to stumble, it's better to have a millstone hung around your neck and drowned. Even in that context there, the drowning, it sounds like it's an ongoing punishment. It keeps on going. It's not just uh, you drown and you die. This is, an, this is a, an, ex, a, an expression for an ongoing punishment. It keeps on going. Um, it's not taken lightly to cause one of these little ones to stumble. Um, so, in um, in light of what I we we're talking about, um, we, I've, I've definitely pointed out some areas where Melanie and I uh, differ in terms of the eternal state of those who do not choose God, who choose themselves, who choose the devil, who choose sin over God. Um, Melly and I, though, it's important to note that we both do agree that um, there is hope and there is opportunity for those who are are 
not saved, who are not yet saved, to call on the name of the Lord and be saved. In Romans chapter 10, uh, verse 9, we have a classic uh, doctrinal expression of salvation. If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And both Melian and I um, agree that the best choice, the best option, is to choose God um, with your whole heart, call out Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and you will be saved, and you won't have to worry about an eternal destiny, either of being destroyed or of an ongoing um, suffering and absence from the glorious presence of our Lord. Well, thank you uh, for watching, and please do also um, watch uh, Melanie's video response to wrap up the entire debate. Thank you.